but I know at this point, I pretty much got the podium at hands. I definitely have the win. Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey, and welcome to my video of how I won my first ever Cal Speed Sprint Series race. Now going into this year, I set my goal very clear. I wanna win the championship. However, I finished 29th overall last year and didn't even have a top 10 in the Sprint Series. So to start the year, my first ever top 10, first ever podium, and first ever win all in one was unbelievable. Trust me, this is gonna be an amazing video. So starting off with the practice sessions, immediately I knew on my favorite layout, Sportivo, this could be my day. And pace seemed to be there. And no matter which card I had, pace was very consistent, keeping up the good race craft, and I knew I could fight towards the front of the field. Now, in qualifying, things did not go well. I was only 52nd overall out of 90 drivers, and that would have started me hypothetically 22nd in the beaming. So obviously that's, uh, that's not gonna win you a championship. I was a bit, uh, a bit frustrated with that. But in my heat races, I knew this is my big chance to show myself. So I started my first heat race all the way in 18th. And in a matter of 10 laps, I got all the way up to fourth place. It was an unbelievable race. And I will be posting a race highlights video of that. Because trust me, that race was incredible. So here we are for the grid in the final. And I am starting in 12th. However, most importantly, we are in the A main. And being 12th, I'm only two positions off from my goal, which was really to finish in the top 10. So we look for the flagger. I'll be over there. Waves the flag. And off we go. Already going to pass this guy on the inside. And we're actually gonna go wheel to wheel up the straightaway. I got him initially and then just couldn't quite pull away. But I'm gonna go around the outside of turn one, passing him, that puts me into 11. Up in front, we have Jacob Reese. I know he's a very good driver, so my goal here is if I can get behind him, I'll follow him and we'll push our way through the pack. Boom, get another guy in the inside of four. So now we're up into 10th. So now I have my top 10 in goal. And I realize, all right, let's go for more. So cart 37, I'm just gonna push on him. Because again, the goal here at the start is you don't want to get caught up in a pack. You want to make sure you can progress all the way to the front. Otherwise, the front guys, they will pull really far away. So I'm looking for a move into Monaco, but I realize it's not really worth it. And plus, there's a bit of a gap already forming. So again, like my original plan, I'm going to follow Jacob Reese. He's a driver I followed a lot, so I know I can trust him. So we see a gap here for the inside on the horseshoe. We're going to take it. It's the quicker line. And now we're up into ninth. At this point, now I'm pushing on Jacob, and this is very ideal can be very defensive into Long Beach, but again, I know I can actually get a better exit here. Going wheel to wheel up the straightaway, and I just seem to have the straight line speed over him. And so now this puts me all the way up into eighth. So fantastic first lap. However, notice there's already a big gap to the group in front. It's about a few seconds right now. So I know I just need to be consistent, put in some quick claps, stay on the racing line, and I'll be good. So I'm now gonna fast forward a lap, and as you can see, we're finally catching that pack. So looking at cart 24, looking for any potential moves, don't really see any. So again, I'm just gonna give him a push because two carts is quicker than one, helps us catch the front pack. And boom, there we are. We are now at the very back of the front pack. He leaves a gap here for the horseshoe, gonna go down the inside, can't really commit to it. Let's take a closer look at that. So this move here, I can see there's a gap on the inside and obviously it's quicker to go on the inside line. You're traveling less distance and of course you'll be quicker. As you can see, he's being defensive, forcing me onto this curb, and I really can't stick to it without having too much contact. So I decided to lift and pull out of it. At this early in the race, there's no reason to risk for a crazy move. It's not like it's the last lap. So again, I know the pace is there, so I'm just gonna push him, and that'll be fine. Here we are going up the front straightaway, and again, I'm gonna push him, and we're just gonna work towards catching that front pack. Now, the one thing to remember when you are in the back of a pack is you need to expect to be a little bit of chaos. Um, often drivers will go wheel to wheel and you'll start to see these weird gaps forming or carts suddenly slowing down and you have to take advantage of when those opportunities come. And that's what I'm looking for here. Are there any potential passing opportunities? Because if not, it's gonna be hard to get through this pack. As you can see, we are right now in eighth place. We got seven carts to get to the front. Not gonna be easy. So we're gonna look for a move into Monaco. Whoa, swipes across me there. Luckily, we don't really have anything happen. It leaves a gap around the outside of Monaco and I make this move stick, which is a bit of a weird one, but it puts me on the inside for horseshoe. All right, now we're up into seventh place. Six carts to go. I see cart 35 in front of me. Again, I'm just gonna hopefully try to push him, as you can see, a little bit of a gap there. But the good news is we're in the pack and the pace is there. Looking on the front straightaway, can I go around him? Nope, just gonna stay behind him. Take the slipstream. And again, just be efficient with our overtakes. That's our goal here. So in front of me is cart 35. And again, not really near him to, to pass him, but because of this gap up in front, I wanna make sure we can close out. So I'm gonna give him every push I can and just try to find a way to close that gap. So I do not want that front pack to pull away. So again, looking here and I know, okay, I'm getting closer, getting closer. I can make a move into the Monaco hairpin. 
stay on the inside, and boom, move is complete. So at this point, I know that the pace is definitely there, and in addition, we are starting to catch the very front. So now we're up into sixth place, five carts to go. I know I just need to remain calm, and again, be efficient with the overtakes, and the time will come. We're looking for a move here on Vince Azua. We seem to get a better exit than him. I'm gonna go wheel to wheel with him up the straightaway, and I'm gonna get a nice push from cart 35. And we're gonna go up the inside of him into turn one. So now at this point, I'm into the top five, so well beyond my goal of finishing in the top 10. And again, I know pace is there, so I just gotta be very patient with it. So coming up to the Sportivo hairpin, this is a turn where if you really maximize the exit, a lot of good things can happen. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. I can see Ivan Martinez in cart 43 starting to go wheel to wheel just a little bit. So I know I just have to wait for that perfect moment. Again, I'm not quite close enough for the Monaco hairpin, but as you can see, we're starting to catch them on the braking zones. And I know I just have to be patient and let the proper time come for the overtake. So here we are a lap later and boom, we are already on the rear bumper of cart 43. So now I know any overtakes are possible. So again, I'm gonna stick to the racing line, let him have the inside, because I want to prioritize my exit. It's not really a hard braking zone into this turn, so it's not the easiest to overtake. Plus, they can get you right in the exit, and you see, it leaves me a nice gap through silk here. I can take the inside, but don't quite have the speed, so we're gonna be wheel to wheel coming up to the Monaco hairpin, and I'm just gonna outbrake him, and boom, the move is complete. All right, so now we're up into fourth, and all of a sudden, I'm looking in front of me. And at this point in the race, I realize, wait a second, I've caught the front of the group. That's a podium up ahead. So again, I don't wanna to be too excited, because obviously if you become a little too excited, you become nervous and make mistakes. And our whole goal here is consistent, fast laps, and we'll be able to catch them. So here we are a lap later, and now I'm really at the front. So I'm just looking, any possible chances, I'm gonna make a move. So right on the back of Ivan Martinez, and again, I know, ideally, I just wanna reach the front of the pack, so I'm not gonna go for moving him into the Monaco hairpin, because I wanna be up at those top three. So Ivan goes for a move on the inside of Jeremy Aldridge, doesn't quite make it stick, and Jeremy's gonna have the inside for the horseshoe. Slight gap he leaves, but again, I can't quite take it, but that's fine. I'm now fully with those top three. We are now gonna pull away together, which is perfect. That is the ideal goal I had here. So at this point, I know the pace is there. I'm at the front. I just gotta find the perfect time to make a move and make it stick. You don't wanna lose any positions or fall back because mistakes here are really costly. So here we are going through Silk. I'm looking to set up a move on Ivan. Again, just looking for that gap, not quite there. Obviously, don't wanna make any risky move, getting us a penalty. So again, that's fine, I'll stay back. Ivan sends it way down the inside of cart 22. But crucially, he's now on the outside. There's a gap here and boom, I'm gonna take him into the horseshoe and now I'm up into third. So at this point I know, okay, it is realistic for me to win this race. I just gotta be very patient here because that move for third, did take a little while, so I gotta find the right time to go for it. And then to my surprise, all of a sudden there's the white flag, it's the last lap. I initially thought there was probably a few more laps to go, so I was a bit surprised by that and I knew, okay, maybe we'd be a little aggressive here and try to find our way to the front. But again, you can see Jeremy in cart 22 going wheel to wheel, so I'm just looking for a potential move. And I know because they're going wheel to wheel, there's a possible chance of me getting something. So I'm gonna push on the back of cart 22. What this is gonna do is very clever. So Jeremy's gonna have the inside for the Sportivo hairpin. However, because it's not really a braking zone, he can't really overtake Frank. As you can see, they're now gonna be wheel to wheel on the exit. Here's the crucial part. Now we're coming up to Silk. Now Silk is a very long right-hander and with a long turn that's easy flat out, you wanna be in the inside, it's the shortest distance. And obviously if you're driving in the shorter distance, it's gonna take less time. So crucially, what happens here, because Frank uses this inner curb, he's gonna start to go a little wide, and that's gonna push Jeremy out. All of a sudden, here in front, there's a gap for me. So I'm gonna slot in behind Frank in cart 22, and now I know, Monaco hairpin, my favorite turn for braking, I'm gonna go down the inside. Frank's very aggressive with the defense, but keeps it clean. I just gotta go down the inside, hard on the brakes, yank the wheel, try to get all the steering scrub I can to slow down, and we're gonna make it stick. Ivan is gonna try to go around the outside of me, but again, I'm on the inside for the horseshoe. I've got it here. So at this point, a little bit of chaos behind as you see carts getting forced over curbs and a little bit of contact as you're trying to get onto the podium. But I know at this point, I pretty much got the podium at hands. I definitely have the win. So I'm very excited at this point. Ivan's pointing me because he's excited. And here we are across the line, victory. I could not believe it. So you now join me outside on my balcony. And this is because following up on a promise I made, 
I did say that if I want to race, I'm going to do a shoey. So uh, yeah, we're going to do one. Things you need for a shoey. Water or any drink. Champagne works, but you can't drink champagne, so can't do that. And a shoe. So we take the shoe, take the water, pour it into the shoe. The racing shoe, it actually works pretty nice with the heel. Very easy to pour into. The shoe's not quite heavy because it's filled with water. And then we drink from the shoe. This is gonna taste horrendous, but here we go. All right, surprisingly, actually not too bad. Uh, the shoe, um, it does smell terrible, uh, but the taste wasn't bad. Although the aftertaste is uh, quite questionable, so I think I'm just gonna throw off the rest. Shoey, I did one. Not doing that again. All right, so there you guys go. Uh, I did do a shoey. That was, uh, yeah, not great. Didn't really enjoy that, but it's worth it. You know, a win's a win, a deal's a deal. So, yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.